Hey guys, welcome back. Okay, um, we got several things I want to get done kind of in this episode that are, I don't know, kind of miscellaneous things. We will work on the tortoises, and I think we'll get to a little bit of the scripting um, to start optimizing those torches a little bit. Um, but I don't think we're going to finish today. Um, the script is... It's not that complex, really, but um, it does take a bit. It might take us like another episode uh, to finish it off. We'll, we'll get it started, but we won't finish it today. I don't think. Um, not unless I go a lot faster than I think I'm going to go. Um, first off, though, I want to clean up this <laughs> this thing right here. Where's, where's his transform? Let's get this out of my way. I want this out of here. so it, it doesn't really matter where this is, but I want it away from my scene so it's not in my face constantly. Okay, the other thing I want to do as part of a kind of a cleanup deal is um right now we got a couple of torches sitting here, right? Um this one even says missing. Uh -huh. Okay. That's alright. Um This is fine the way we have it, but the thing is, and we can you know, we can always duplicate this guy and, and create more torches. Um but the thing is, if I change something here, then I gotta go back and change it in here. Um, if I want it to apply to all the torches, it's kind of a pain. Um, so there's a way around that. Uh, it's where you can get all the torches kind of linked together. So if you change one, they all change. But you still have the flexibility that you can change one without, with, without all of them changing. So you can do either way. Um, and that's through the use of prefabs. So what I'm gonna do is set up a new folder for my prefabs. And I'm gonna say prefabs. Now, there's going to be a lot of prefabs, guys. Uh, this is where like all of your your um, different models, not the models themselves, but prefabs of the models, like the, the the things with lots of components on, like this torch, right? The torch has a mesh um, somewhere in here that I stuck, which I don't remember where it is. I'm blanking on where the mesh is now. Um, toward, oh, it's in the LODs, that's right. So yeah, it's got the mesh filter, and that's not a prefab. But the whole thing, this torch, the glove, the whole deal is like one system, right, guys? So what I want to do is I'm going to take this torch, and I'm going to pull him back down into the assets, and I'm going to stick him in prefabs, okay? Um... Now, like I said, there's going to be a lot of these, so I'm going to create another folder in here. I'm going to say, uh, for this, I'm going to say decor. And let's just throw him in there. All right, so what does that do for us? Well, now this torch I can pull out, and you see it pulls out just fine. And he's now, if you look up here, this instance of this torch, we've got this torch selected. Is, sitting, is saying prefab, okay? Um, you'll notice the other torches, this one says model, okay? This one might say, this one also says prefab because that's the one I used to pull him in, okay? So the, the game automatically made him a prefab of this. So if I change this torch, like say I change his scale to 10, you will notice that both torches in the scene are changing. So it's a way to change like if you have a global change you want to make, um, it's like all the torches all at once. That's how you can do it. Um, on the other hand, if I select this torch, which you see is a prefab, um, I can make a change to him individually. Like if I just want this particular torch to be different from all the other torches, I can do that. Now, if I'm changing him and I decide, wait, that's a pretty good change. I like that. I want that to apply to all the torches. I can go to the prefab selection and I can say apply. And it would apply to all the, the prefab torches. Um, similarly, now let's, let's go back down here and change this one because I just applied it to all the torches. Okay. So similarly, let's say I'm, I'm working on this torch and, and I've you know, scaled him down to 10. And you notice it goes bold, because that, that means it's different from the prefab when, it, when you've got a bold entry. Um, now let's say I decide, you know what, that that really sucked, I don't like that. We can hit the revert button, 
and it'll revert back to the prefab. Okay, except for position and rotation. Rotate those are individual. Uh, the prefab doesn't doesn't handle the position and rotation, which it shouldn't, right? You don't want all your all your prefabs in the same place. Um, so yeah, there you go. It's a really kind of handy way to um, to deal with large groups of objects that are all the same. Okay. In fact, it's so handy that this guy that's not a prefab, I'm going to delete him. And instead, I'm going to use my prefab, and I'm going to rename this. There's no reason for this to be Torch 2. Um, I'm going to drop, let's see, let's focus in on him a little bit. Drop him in, I'm going to take off his rotation, and stick him where the other torch was. Somewhere up in here, like this, right? Just kind of center him up. Stick him on the wall. Something like that. He might be a little higher than the other one. That's alright. The other one's sitting right about here, isn't it? Let's see. Uh, yeah, something like that. Okay. Um, yeah, it's fine. Uh, <laughs> for our demonstration purposes. Sorry, guys. That's my um, perfectionism coming into, into play. It's like when I'm designing the game, it's, uh, you know, I, I want them exactly where I want them. And, but for the demonstration purposes, it's not that important. Okay, so we've got our prefab set up, so that's cool. Let's take a quick look at the uh, assets. Look at this editor folder. Um, what is this? This is a script, and this script is coming from... Um, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, I'm almost positive, this is coming from the first-person controller that we put in uh, to control the camera. Um, it's kind of sitting out here. There's there's no real reason for it to be out there. It has to be in an editor folder. But let's drop this into the editor folder we've already got set up for scripts. Okay, so I'm going to delete that editor folder. It's not, there's no reason for that to be in there. Um, so that just cleans everything up. Now you've got standard assets out here. Um, I'm going to leave that alone. Uh, that's just the um, that's a folder that that Unity created that pulls in some of the standard assets that we're using. Uh, mostly this is first person camera stuff. Okay, um, so we won't mess with that. Okay, um, let's go ahead and make sure everything's working. It should be. Yeah, it's all fine. Uh, except I lost my I lost my stats screen. Why did I lose my stats screen? What happened to you? Okay. All right, guys. There's something I did not realize that um, I can't move this UI component. If I move him, it affects where the, the canvas is. So I'm going to reset this transform. Um, you can move the well, you can't even move the canvas because if I move him, he actually ends up popping back into the same place. So it's just, it is where it is. Uh, there's nothing we can do about it. Um, it's just going to be there. Just have to deal. It isn't really that big of a deal. Okay, let's keep focusing on our scene. Um, okay, guys. The, the next thing I want to deal with here is it's kind of uh, not ironic, but sad that um, I put in three different statistics and not one single one of them is working right <laughs> so let's do something about that um, I did look, do some research and I discovered that we are indeed frame locked to my particular monitors uh, refresh rate which happens to be 59 megahertz or 59 Hertz I forget if it's megahertz or Hertz whatever um, which is fine um, what that does is it prevents a potential, um, you wouldn't really call it a bug, but a screen artifact or a graphics artifact called tearing, where uh, part of the image is ready, like the top half of the image is ready to display, be displayed, but the, the bottom half is not. So you get the first top half is the new frame and the second half is the old frame and that causes a tearing effect. Um, it's possible to get that um, I think mostly with older cards. I don't know that it really happens that much anymore. I haven't seen it in a long, a long time. But it's, it is nice to have um, locked to your, 
your refresh rate because that prevents that, that from happening. It means that the entire frame is ready to go before it's displayed. And that's why we're locked to 59. Um, if we go to Edit, Project Settings, uh, Quality, um, you see we got various quality levels here. Now, the fastest is, you'll see right away, that the LODs are, are changing. If you look at the uh, the arch on the on the far left, if I switch between fast and fastest, there's an LOD change there, and that's coming from the LOD bias, which is right down here. It's set to 0 0.3 at the fastest, which means um, the LOD levels on the on the arch, which are here, are actually being multiplied by 0.3, so they're actually switching to lower LEDs much faster. Um, all right, we've got to go back there. Um, and then there's, there's there's various other stuff that changes. So you'll see the vertical sync count in the fastest ones up through simple say don't sync. Those are not frame locked and the assumption is that's because we're trying to get every possible last frame we can out of the system. Okay, and we're probably not going to hit 60 frames per second or, or the, the frame rate of the thing so we don't want to wait for the vertical refresh. Um, if you're only doing 30 frames a second and you wait for the vertical refresh you're, you're actually going to drop even faster than that so you want to squeeze every last frame you can out of those but once you start getting into good you see it switches over to every vertical blank um, and it stays that way all the way through. So right now I'm sitting at every V blank. If I run this right now, we're locked in at 59 frames per second. Okay, there's a couple different settings in here. We can even do every second vertical blank. Now I don't know why you would want to do this. Um, and you see that drops us down to 30 frames per second because it's you know half of mine which is actually 59 so it's actually 29 and a half is what it's locked at um i'm not sure what the reason is for that uh I mean, if there's some cards that will actually cause artifacts every second without doing every second vertical blank but anyway if we set this to don't sync um for the fast for the fantastic setting and we run it we'll actually be running at the fastest and that's 240 frames per second that's more like what I expected to see really um, for this simple scene now you see the the frames per second on the um, the little this little graphics panel right here sitting right about a thousand and if I get the lights off the screen it probably jump up even more eh, maybe not so yeah, it'd be about a thousand frames per second um, what I think is going on here guys is that the FPS that is being displayed in the statistics screen is trying to compensate for the editor running. Um, that's my best guess. So right now we are losing frames per second because the editor itself is running. So if we were running this as a standalone, according to our little statistics screen, it should be running at about a thousand frames per second. Um, and right now we're getting 220, 230 frames per second on the on the real counter. Um, so I mean, it's just I think that's what's going on. Um, I could test that later on. Um, I'm not too interested in testing it right now, but yeah. So there you go. We got one of our three working right. Um, I'm gonna leave this set at fantastic right now. Uh, I could switch all these out, good and beautiful, to to drop them. But um, ultimately, I will actually probably do want to set this to every V blank, but right now I want to set it to don't sync because I want to know what my real frames per second is. Um, I don't want to locked to a particular frame rate. I want to know how fast the game is performing. Okay, so there you go. We got at least one of our <laughs> statistics, right? That's nice. Now, <clears throat> I was thinking about this, guys. Um, this, this script that we have. And I was thinking we might be able to uh, maybe enhance it a little bit. Um, right now we're sitting at uh, we're sitting at the three colors, red, yellow, and green. 
Um, and it's it's kind of got a cutoff point, right? 10 frames per second, 30 frames per second, and then anything above 30 frames per second is going to come up as green. Um, I think I want to play with that a little bit. So I'm going to set up some colors, and I'm going to say color 32 equals... Uh, uh, let's do it this way. Color. Let's set up um, a dark green. Now, yeah, I should make these private. Uh, let's go green. Then yellow. And red. And let's set up some colors for that. So, color dark green equals um, whoop, equals new color. All right, we want to set up some red, green, blue system so this is going to be a dark green so um, no red now these are um, between 0 and 1 guys so um, the green we want it to be a dark green so let's go 0 0.3 just as kind of a test and then no blue okay all right two three four let's just do it this way real fast yellow red Okay, so for green, we want full green. For yellow, uh, let's see, yellow is a um, combination of, if I'm not mistaken, red and green, right? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> I could be wrong about that. Um, we'll find out, I guess. And then red, we'll put one, and then zero. Gosh, I can't remember my um, primary color mixer mixtures. Yellow is green and blue, maybe? Maybe it's green and blue. You guys are probably yelling at me right now. No, you idiot, it's red and red and green or whatever. Let's try that. Okay, so we'll save that. So we got some colors set up. Now, let's let's think about this for a second. This would be nicer if we actually, instead of having these, these, um, kind of, uh, you know, hard cutoff points, if we could actually, um, lerp between them. And it turns out that we can. So, color32.lerp. There's a function for this. And what it wants is the first color which is going to be the low end, right? So we want for this one, let's do color green and the high end, which is going to be color dark green. Okay. And what do we want to lerp between? Now, now T is a number between zero and one. Okay. Now, if the value is less than zero, it, it floors it at zero. And if it's greater than one, it cap, it, uh, caps it at one so it's it's locked between zero and one so we don't have to worry about going out of bounds what we do need to think about is where do we want this to set so we want this from to go green to dark green from 30 to 60 frames per second that's what I've decided on so in order to get this to, to 30 to 60 what we need to do is go um, FPS Let's see if I got this right minus 30 Point zero. I'm going to put in some parentheses here. Uh, divided by. So let's think about this for a second. If the frames per second is at 60, which is what our 30.0 f. If the frames per second is at 60, what we'll end up here is 30, right? And then what we want here is 1. So we're going to divide by 30.0 f, right? So is that going to give us what we want? 
So think about this. 60 minus 30 is 30, divided by 30 is 1, and that'll be dark green. So anything 60 or above will be at the dark green level. If we're at 30, 30 minus 30 is 0, divided by 30 is 0, will be at the green level. So it should shift from green to dark green as it shifts between 30 and 60. And anything above 60 is going to, again, cap at 1. Anything below 30 would cap at 0. So if FPS is greater than 30.0.0F, we're going to do this. So that should give us our first value. Um, else if FPS is greater than... Now, we want to go to yellow. So we'll do yellow down to, say... Um, we had it at 10. That seems a little bit low to me. Um, let's go 20.0F. Okay, so this in this case, the text.color, same thing, color32.lerp. And the low end, we're going to put color yellow. And at the high end, we're going to put color green. And in this case, <clears throat> what we want, if I'm not mistaken, is FPS minus, no, not just, not F, stop that. Why are you doing that? Minus, okay. So we know we're going to be somewhere between 20 and 30, right? So let's go 20.0F. Um, because that's the low end. So if we're at 20, if we're at 30, really, what is what we're after here. 30 is the high end. So if we're at 30, we want this number to be 1. So we want to divide by 30. Again, same thing. So is that right? No, 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 no. Sorry, that's not right. 10. Because if this would be 30, minus 20 would be 10, and then divide by 10 would be 1. And that would give us green. If it's 20, we'd be 0, and that would be yellow. Okay? All right. Very nice. <coughs> Else if the text. I haven't tested this at all, guys, so I have no idea if it's going to work. But it should. I, I can't imagine why it wouldn't. Um, unless I'm messing up the equations or something. Okay. Uh, FPS is greater than 10.0F. All right, in this case, we're going to shift between... Actually, we don't need this else if. Just else. Let's get rid of all this. We don't need this. Color red. Color yellow. And then... FPS. Okay, somehow I ended up on the other side of my parentheses. Um, minus. Okay, so in this case, actually, we don't want. No, I take this back. We don't want to subtract anything because we're basically going to go from zero to twenty here. Okay, so zero is already going to be zero, um, and twenty is. Um, 20 is the range, so we'll go 20.0 F. So think about this. If it's 20, so here we're greater than 20, so we'll only hit this if we're between 0 and 20, right? So if it's 20, 20 divided by 20 is 1, we'll end up with yellow. Um, and then obviously if it's 0, 0 divided by 20 is 0, we'll end up with red, okay? And then it'll, it'll shift in between those. Okay, I think that should work. Let's kind of find out. See if we get any errors. Okay. Um, looks like we got a dark. It's such a dark green that I can't hardly even see it. <laughs> but we're at 250. Okay, let's let's check it out. Um, let's go back to my. Uh, what are we looking for here? We're looking for project settings quality. It's set to beautiful. Which has a which has a 
of screen lock. We should. We're still getting a dark green. Because uh, we're still up at 50. Okay, so that's fine. Um, stop. Now let's. I'm going to set this down to every second B blank just to see what. This should get us down to 29. And 29 should be a light green. Yeah. There you go. It's a light green. Because it's almost red around 30. Um, if it gets down much lower than that, it should start getting yellower. But yeah, that looks pretty good. I like it. Looks like we're working pretty just fine. So I'm going to set this back to V blank. And I'm going to set us up back up to fantastic. Okay. All right. Let's go ahead and save. Very nice, guys. The only problem with that dark green is it's hard to see against this, this, uh, the textures and stuff. Um, but that's fine. You know, if it's, if we can't see it, that means it's, <laughs> we don't really need to see it. Right? Okay. Gang. Here's what I want to do. We have two torches at this scene. I'm gonna grab this whole thing. I'm gonna copy and I'm gonna paste it and then I'm gonna pull it over. Um, I wish Unity had a thing like uh, they have in Maya. Two, three, four. Where uh, you could just hit the, you could set up a Control D to duplicate stuff with an offset. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so there's now 20 lights in this scene. Let's run this. I'm just curious as to what our frame rate is going to look like. Um, hang on a second. We've already dropped down to 40 frames per second. Oh, because I duplicated the camera. Ah, darn it. I didn't want to do that. Okay. Uh, no, we definitely do not want to duplicate the camera. Let's get rid of that. Um, that was bad. My bad. I'm surprised that worked at all, actually. There should only be one camera. Alright. Let's see if that's working. Yeah, there we go. That's better. And actually, that's... <laughs> that's hilarious. My frame rate's still at 250. That's just awesome. But you'll notice in the stats box, we've dropped down to about 250. Actually, my frames per second has gone down to 160. Just from those tor those, those 20 torches, guys. Okay, so we've got a, a bank of, of 20 here. I'm going to take all this. Um, really rather not have the first-person camera. Let's see where you're at. Let's turn you off. So I should have everything except for the camera. I'm going to copy it and I'm going to duplicate it. So there's 20, let's see, what do we say? There's 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. What we have here, guys, at this point is 100 torches. Okay. Let's run that and just see what it looks like. Because I want I want to show you guys the problem we're gonna have. Okay. Um 
I'm just curious to see what it does. It's actually dro it looks like it's dropping, although not too badly, really. Um, 100 torches. You got a frame rate of about mm, 150-ish. So nearly not not so bad. Take that. Turn off the controller. I don't want the controller. I'm going to copy and I'm going to paste. This might take a minute. Oh, damn you. I want the new ones, please, if you would. Thank you. So there's 200. Duplicate that again. I'm gonna grab the carefully grab the the arrow. There you go. Right there, we now have, we should have, if I'm not mistaken, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, two, three, four, five. One hundred, two hundred, three hundred torches. Hopefully with just one camera controller. And there you go. 300 torches in the in the game right now. Now it's actually doing better than I thought it would do. Um, where you're looking at 70 frames per second, that's not bad, really. But keep in mind, we're lighting a very very simple scene. There's no animation going on. There's very little scripting really going on, um, and you're still sitting at you know 70 frames per second, um, which which is kind of a it's kind of nice really actually. I have to admit I have to give props to the uh, the designers of, of Unity, they've, they've, they've done a good job. But still, we're at 70 frames per second. And we were at over a thousand, if you believe the statistics screen, and over 200 if you believe to my, my particular counter, which doesn't take into account the editor functions. So you can see the problem, guys. Um, if this scene gets more complicated, and it will get more complicated than, than what we're lighting right now, um, We're going to lose our frame rate. Uh, right now we're sitting at, at very acceptable numbers, but it will go down, and we need that as high as possible right now. It's just it's too it's too low. I mean, you might think 70 frames per second is, is fine, but again, once we get more scripts in, we got some artificial intelligence running, we got pathing going on. Um, you're really going to burn some frames doing that that kind of stuff. So we want this as high as possible right now. This is too low for this simple of a scene, basically is what I'm saying, even though there's 300 torches in there, right? So that's our, that's our problem. How do we fix it? And, well, I was just looking at the time on the video. We're at 30 almost 40 minutes. Um, we are definitely not going to finish the torches today. Absolutely not. Um, but at least I've demonstrated the, the issue, and uh, and that's good. Um, and in the process, I've turned this whole thing into a big mess. Okay. What I want to do here, gang, is I'm going to take the prefab torch, which where wherever it is, uh, under prefabs probably, and there it is. I'm going to add a component to this. And the component I'm going to add is, oh, probably under physics. Yes. We're going to add a sphere collider to it. I think that's right. Let me double check that, just to be sure. I think that's what I want. Yeah, that's right. That's what I want. Okay. So let's take a look at this sphere collider that we just added. Now, remember, I'm working on the prefab, so it automatically added it to all the, the torches that are prefabs of this torch, okay? Um, 
anything I change here is going to uh, propagate up into here. So first of all, we want this to be a trigger. Um, what this does, guys, is uh, it turns on some scripting functions for us. So that's fine. Um, we want them centered around the torch, and we're gonna stick. I'm gonna stick a radius of say 40 in here, just for funsies. Okay, so let's take a look at that. If you run in here, you close in on this. This blue bit right here, that's your trigger. Okay. Now, right now, it's not going to do anything. Um, <clears throat> Why did I just fall through the world? That was odd. There should be no falling through the world. Hey guys, welcome back. Okay, a um, little bit of a snafu there. Uh, I actually had to change controllers. Um, it turns out there was apparently a bug in the um, first person controller camera which caused it to fall through the floor. <laughs> It really messed up the colliders um, whenever the, the torches were on. So um, it made me tear up my hair out for a minute, but um, it turns out it wasn't my fault. Um, it was just a bug in the, in the controller. So rather than try to debug, this is why I don't like other people's scripts. Um, you can tell that, that you know they can get you into trouble. Um, so I try to use them as little as possible. But anyway... Um, let me just make sure I've got this set back to where I want it. Uh, let's set this to 40. And it takes, there's 300 torches to for it to update every time I change something here. So it takes a second for it to work. Let's just make sure that's all working. And there you go. So you see, I've, I've got a totally different um, controller now. I don't like this controller as much because it's not as responsive. Um, but what are you going to do? So you can see my frames for a second are really dropping. Look at that. Down to like 10 with this particular camera. Um, pretty bad, really. So yeah, that actually uh, emphasizes the need for us to fix this, this whole thing. So we've got the sphere colliders on the torches. We've got them set to a radius of 40. Now, and we've got them set to triggers. Now what does that do for us? That means um, these things will trigger every time a rigid body enters or exits their uh, their field right now this little guy right here has a rigid body on him okay now they only trigger when rigid bodies hit them so these guys they, they can't trigger themselves right there's no rigid body on this torch um, that I'm aware of <laughs> as far as I'm aware um, so they will only turn on when we hit that torch, okay? So this is a good spot to write some code. Um, let's see if I can get back into this. I'm, yeah. So let's write a piece of code um, in our scripts area. And I'm gonna call this, uh, I'm gonna create a C-sharp script and I'm gonna call this torch, torch, trigger. Not to be confused with torch toggle. Toggle is that, that button that we added to um, turn on and off torches in the editor. This is going to fire during the trigger. Yeah, reload all. Um, we don't need this. Oh, uh, we don't need this. Oh, wait. What happened to my torch? Did I just turn it off? <laughs> Did I just confuse myself? Okay, so here we go. Um, for the moment, I don't think we need collections. I'm going to turn that off. Um, and I'm not going to use either of these functions. Okay. There's two functions we want to, we want to deal with, um, and these will fire automatically. Okay. Um, void on trigger enter. And then there's a, there's a um, parameter for this, the collider other. So this is the, the collider tells you what has hit that trigger, right? And then we'll also do on trigger exit. Uh, and it's the same deal, collider other. 
Okay, so those are the functions we want to um, to fire. All right, Let's save that. Um, I'm trying to decide if this is a good spot. Yeah, this is probably a good spot, guys, uh, to do a couple of things here. Um, one thing, this this light counter that we were using, which is under torch toggle. Let's remove that and let's put it here. And same thing here. So what we want to happen is we want when this when we exit the trigger, we want this torch to pretty much basically turn off, right? And when we enter the trigger, we want it to turn on. Um, now right now it's not going to do anything, but Let's check and see if that counter is working. It should be working at this point. So let's go ahead and run. It doesn't appear to be, actually. Let's go ahead and run this way just to see if... Um... Oh, pfft. you know why? Because I didn't put it on the torches. <laughs> so why is that not working? Well, that's a good reason. Um... So let's take this script that we just wrote. Uh, now I'm going to standard down, so let's get rid of that. Scripts. Torch trigger. And I'm going to set it on top of... <clears throat> here, we'll just put it on to um, this torch right here. And then I'm going to take this guy. So he's got the torch trigger. And I'm going to apply. So it applies to all the prefabs. So now the, the prefab should have the trigger on it. All right, let's try that and see if that works. You got to put your script on something, otherwise it doesn't run, does it? There you go. We have 300 active lights. <laughs> awesome. Um, if I run through this scene... Interesting. We don't seem to be decrementing the lights. Okay, so all of the lights are hitting. Why is that? Er, you got pain? Grab the thing. So what does 40 look like? Oh, no wonder it's setting to 300. <laughs> I've got this radius way up there, don't I? Wow, 40 is going to be humongous. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That explains it. Hence the reason we're hitting um, 300 active torches. I don't think we want it that high. Let's try... Um, let's go to the torch. Let's hit a trigger radius of, say, 4. Let's let that apply to all 300 torches. Let's see where that's at. 4 is still really... No. Okay, that's the one that I messed up. Let's revert. Thank you. What are you at? All right, everybody else is good. That's still way too high. So let's play with that a little more. Let's set your radius to, say, 1. Okay, that's more reasonable. Um, we can play with this more later on. I don't really know what to set it to at this point. 0 0.5, maybe? Okay, let's try 0 0.5 and see what, what that does. Okay, we now have 100 active lights in the scene. And you can see our frames per second is sitting up around 60. Um, well... Okay, no, that I shouldn't say that. The, the frames per second is still going to be low. You see, you see we're sitting around 17, <laughs> 15, because it's not actually doing anything. Okay. All it's, oh, that's a nice little function there, dude. Boy, this, this controller isn't all that good either. At least it's not falling through the floor. Um, all it's doing is counting the, the trigger hits. So we're not actually doing anything right now. Okay, guys, let's go. Um, 
what we should do here. Let's get um a light. Let's set ugh. <clears throat> let's get a reference to the light. And let's set that in Unity on the prefab. Yeah, and it's got to update 300 torches, so give it a second. Yeah, we got a, we got a reference to the light, so let's grab the light source, drop them in here. Think. So now we got a reference to the light. What I want to do here is um, I actually want to turn off that light. So uh, let's say um, the light dot. What's the command that I want here? Um, I thought it was set active. Maybe it's just active. Ah, enabled. That's it. Equals false. So we're just going to turn off the light. Okay. And we'll turn it back on when we hit that trigger. Now. Got a nasty feeling that's not going to work with one with one with one of the other scripts, uh, scripts we wrote, but we'll test that in just a second. Let's see what that does to our frame rate. We had 300 lights going. Uh, Got to give it a second. Okay. We have about 100 lights going at this moment. See people. I wonder if that's working. Boy, this guy's just awesome, isn't he? <laughs> what is he doing? There we go. Now the number of active lights is going up and down. I'm going to try to turn him. Boy, this is a terrible controller. We're going to have to fix this. I can't see a dang thing. Get around. Seriously? We're not even... <laughs> right. Let's see if I can spin this camera around. Turn the camera, kind of, sorta, very slowly. Um, doesn't look like it's making a lot of difference, does it? All right. <clears throat> what I'm gonna do then, gang, is head for back for the prefab again, and I'm gonna set the radius down to something really low, like 0 0.1. I want to see this working. Let's just make sure that's set. Yeah, looks good. I want to see those lights go off. Um, oh, would you settle down, please? Dude. Doesn't kind of look like they're going off, does it? Although the number of active lights is only at three. I still see lights back here, so I think you're lying to me. I'm not sure that's working, gang. Let me try something else here. Um, give me back my script. I'm going to say range equals zero. That's awesome. Um, What's the range on these guys? 1.5? Is that right? Uh, light source. Range is 15. F 15. Let's just see what happens there. No. 
Okay, clearly something's not working right. Oh, uh, I bet you I know why. I set the damn thing to static. Okay, let's try fixing that. Let's, um, prefabs decor light source is not static. Decremented. There we go. Now we gotta figure out how to turn it. Would you get up, fool? Let's see, how do I turn the camera? Turn the camera. Turn the camera. Turn. Ugh, worst camera ever. <laughs> Seriously. Are you joking with me? No, don't go that way. Go that way, fool. Okay, I think we got it, guys. It is working. That light is off. There you go. <clears throat> they are shutting off. Oh, I hate that camera. We're going to have to definitely fix that before too much longer. Okay. That's good. That's fine. Um, what I'm going to do, gang, is set everybody's initial range to zero. Let's run that. There you go. Our FPS isn't much higher. But, okay. We've got a camera system that seems to be working. Or uh, not a camera, no, we definitely do not have a camera system that seems to be working. We have a light system that seems to be working. I'm going to try to get this thing to come back around. Not against the wall. And there you go. So the lights are coming on as we get close to them, and they're shutting off as we leave. Which is what we want. Okay. <clears throat> Very nice. Um, and just out of curiosity, I'm just need to get two active lights. Let's go ahead and go back to the torch now that we know that it's working. And I'm going to set these range, these uh, sphere collider ranges a little higher, back up to where do we have it at? One. Okay, let's try that. Jeez. Um, zero point five. It's a little hard to tell, guys. I okay. Uh, that's the green one, right? That's probably reasonable. Let's see where that puts us. Uh, 25 active lights. Uh, sure, sure. That might be okay. Okay, guys. Um, that's better. Um, I'm going to start taking, I'm going to take out that increment light and decrement light debug log thing. Let's clean that out of there. Um, trigger, let's clean this out of here. We'll fix this 
later. Um, let me run this one more time just to take a look. Yeah, so we've got 25 lights going off. Um, considering how close together all these lights are, that's not bad. Um, I think in the game they probably won't be that um, close together usually. So um, this is really kind of a worst case scenario. So I'm not too too stressed about that. I'm a little bit stressed about this this frames per second. It really is low for only 25, 30 lights right now. That's too low. Something's wrong. This um, I think it's the camera system. It just really sucks. So um, I'm gonna try to figure figure out what's going on with that other camera system because at least that one I could control and I liked it better. Um, unfortunately, it's falling through the damn floor whenever <laughs> it gets hit by a trigger. Um, I'll try to figure it out off camera and maybe we can switch back over to that. All right, guys. So for right now, we'll leave this here. Um, we've made some pretty decent progress. We've put these triggers on the lights and uh, we've set it up so that we can have 300 lights on the scene and yet only some of them are on. Um, and you can see a lot of them are off, but they're off in the distance. And that's kind of what the way we want this to work. So um, yeah, we'll, we'll refine this in the next episode. So I will see you guys in the next one. Thanks a lot.